sound design. Yeah. All right, so in this video, I wanna show you how to identify crossover slopes in Smart so that they are not falling too steeply. So I read this article by Merlin Van Veen about the relative absolute method, and he says, be mindful of the compound effect of electronics in concert with mechanical acoustics. And I remember, oh, I've heard that actually from several people, and I've actually given that advice to other people. But then I saw this image up here and I realized, I don't really know how to identify these in the wild, in SMART. Um, I know roughly what they look like, but I couldn't really tell you the difference between a 24 dB per octave slope and a 48 dB per octave slope. So that's when I started thinking, um, how can I start training myself to look at these in SMART? So the probably the best method is to just measure your DSP and see if the result you're getting electronically is uh, similar, the same to the result that you're getting acoustically. Number two, you can look at some pre-record, pre-measured filters, some templates that I've done for you. And number three, you could look at the bandwidth and see if that is around the right area. All right, so let me go through those methods and show you what I mean. So I've got a main and a sub here on the floor in my living room. So let's first just measure those in native mode and make sure I've got everything um, out here. No filters. Okay. So go. Native sub. Sub native. And now I'm going to put uh, a filter here at 80 hertz. And I want a very steep filter. I want a very narrow area of interaction. So my first idea is I'm going to use Linkwitz Riley 24 dB per octave filters. Here's a high pass on the main. Here's a low pass on the sub. And as I mentioned to you, first I should measure that DSP so I can see later if the results are correct. So I'll mute both of these. I have this third channel, just copy my setting here. So 48 dB per octave, LR, and let's hit stop on this and go, nope, not that one. Go on this signal generator. There we go. So here's that 48 dB per octave filter. Here's the thing though, I have already measured those previously. So I don't, it's exactly the same. I don't need to measure it again. I've got these stored in Smart so I can bring them up anytime that I want. And cool, so I just wanna to prove to you that that works. All right, so let's actually measure our filters. Here's my main. Cool, so now here's my question. Am I getting a 48 dB per octave result here? Um, now if I set the filter here, then it looks like, yes. Look, it's kind of going down here. But if I actually offset it up here where these peaks are, or even around here, it's too steep. Okay, so I'll offset these both 7 dB, and now it looks like it's obviously too steep, right? This is too far down. So let me back off on the filter while watching the measurement um, to see if I can get it to more match this curve of the DSP filter. Um, so let's go to 24LR. Okay, and that looks better. Now that the peaks have gone down, I might even take these down, maybe 1 dB. Okay, then they line up really nicely here. And I could just prove to myself that it's okay by taking this to 12LR. The peak changes again. So I would go down here maybe, and I would see that, okay, this is not matching my template here. So I'll go back to 24.
Cool. So what we see here is that the combination of whatever native filters were here in the main plus this now 24 dB per octave filter that I've added have resulted in a 48 dB per octave roll off of this filter. Let's do the same in the sub. Um, sorry, this looks so messy. Let me get rid of some things. Main. And I'll get rid of this. Okay. So same thing in the sub. We're starting off with a 48 dB per octave filter. And we can see right away this is way too steep. Okay, it's not matching our template here. Okay, that looks good, especially if I offset this a little bit. Let's just check 12. Okay, and 12 is going to be too much, especially if I bring it down a little bit. You can see some things escaping up here. Not really matching the slopes. So let's go back to 24. And that makes me happy. So now these two are symmetrical. All right, so now we can look at these together. Okay, so that's how you can just verify your filters by looking at uh, measurements of your DSP or these um, pre-measured filters that I already had. Let's also take a look at what the bandwidth might be. So let's hide everything. So what I found just going through all of these and looking at them together is that the these filters seem to have predictable bandwidth. And I wrote that all down here. So if we have 48 dB per octave filters on each one, we expect that to be about a 0 0.81 octave bandwidth. So let's look at that. I'll hide these. We'll bring up our results and I'll grab the sub. I'll offset it 10 dB. And where is that? 100 hertz? So 67 to 100 hertz, 67, 100. So that gives me a bandwidth of 0 0.57, which is not 0 0.81, but, but pretty close, definitely closer to 0 0.81 than any of these other numbers that I have. And the discovery I made is that we could also just look at a multiplier. So instead of using this equation, I could just divide 100 by 67 to get 1.5 and see that that is very close as a multiplier to 1.75 and know that I'm looking at something close to um, 248 dB per octave filters on top of each other. So I hope this isn't too confusing. Um, I was just looking for a shortcut to help me do this in the field where I might not need to uh, get into one more filter. Not that math is bad, but if I could just remember these three numbers, I can quickly divide the two frequencies where isolation begins and then find out what the multiplier is. So there's one more thing I want to show you there, which is that if we hide all of these and look at main and sub native, I think one other great use of bandwidth is just to see, do I need to do anything? I mean, the first question when I'm looking at a relationship like this is, do I need to do anything? I mean, these speakers out of the box are designed to work together. So what is their native bandwidth? So let's do the same thing here. Offset this by 10, 61.5. And what, 130? So 61.5 and 130. And let's check my shortcut first. So if I just said 130 divided by 65, 
that is the number two, and the number two is pretty close to this multiplier of 1.75, so I'm expecting that the bandwidth is going to be something like 0 0.81 because of these, uh, which is something like 48 dB per octave filters, and in fact the bandwidth is one, which is uh, pretty close to 0 0.81. So when numbers sort of fall in between numbers here, the system and the shortcut falls apart a little bit. But my real goal of showing you the bandwidth here is that bandwidth of one octave is fine. Like when we're looking at these filter relationships and we're seeing that a second order filter should give me something like three octaves and I'm already at one octave, then that to me says, hey, you're done. You don't need to do anything else here. So unless I'm really concerned about some um, spurious energy, you know, down here that I really don't want or some of this stuff up here that I don't want and I want to sort of get rid of some of that, then um, I might not do anything. So moving forward, I think into my workflow before I insert any filters or make any changes, I would just like to look at the native response look at the bandwidth of that native response and say, hey, if it's, you know, not something crazy like three, four, five octaves, like maybe I'm happy with that already. If this is what I was gonna shoot for in the end already, why go to the trouble of inserting some filters? So just my thoughts on that. So let me know if this is helpful for you guys. Let me know if you do it differently. How do you verify that the um, slopes you're getting in the field are actually the things that you wanted to get. And do you ever look at bandwidth? I'm curious. So let me know in the comments for this video. Oh, also I'll put in uh, below this video in the comments, a link to where you can download all of these filters. All right, thanks. Sound design. Yeah.